Computers are great at doing boring tasks billions of times in the time it took you to listen to me read this one sentence. When it comes to reading tasks in code, you can either copy and paste your code multiple times, or you can use loops, simple coding constructs that repeat a block of code for as long as the condition is true. To demonstrate this, I want to introduce you to a special debugging function called print. You give it some text to print, and it'll print it out. If you're on a playground like we are here, you'll see your text appear in the results window. If you're using a real app in Xcode, you'll see your text appear in Xcode's log window. Either way, print's a great way to get a sneak peek at the contents of a variable. I'm gonna go ahead and paste some code in rather than sort of type it in front of you because it's quite a bit of code. I'll choose paste here. Boom, in it comes. And you'll see it's printing out one times 10 is one times 10, two times 10 is two times 10, and so forth through 10 times 10 is 10 star 10. And when it's finished running, you'll see you have the 10 times table in your playground results pane. But it's hardly efficient to code. And in fact, a much cleaner way is to loop over a range of numbers using what's called the closed range operator, which is three periods or full stops in a row, dot, dot, dot. Using the closed range operator, we can rewrite that whole thing in just three lines of code. We're going to say for i in one through 10, print string interpolation i times 10 is string interpolation i star 10, like that. And the results pane will now just show 10 times for our loop, meaning it was run 10 times. However, if you scroll through the output window at the bottom, you're gonna see all the information right there. What loop does is count from one to 10, including one and 10, assigns each number along the way to the constant i, then runs the block of code inside the braces. So it'll set i to be one and run print one times 10 is one times 10. Then print, uh, set i to be two, then print two times 10 is 20, i becomes three and so forth. If you don't need to know what number you're on, you can use an underscore instead. For example, we could print some Taylor Swift lyrics like this. Vastur equals fakers gonna, then for underscore in one through five, stir plus equals space fake. At the end, print stir. And that's gonna print out fakers gonna fake, 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 by in the string each time the loop goes around. If Swift doesn't have to assign each number to a variable each time the loop goes around, it can run your code a little bit faster. As a result, if you write for i in some range, then don't use i, Xcode will suggest you change to underscore. There's a variant of the closed range operator called the half open range operator, and they are easily confused. The half open range operator looks like dot dot less than dot dot less than and counts from one number up to and excluding another. For example, the range one dot dot less than five will count one, two, three, four. Swift provides a very simple way to loop over all the elements in an array. Because Swift already knows what kind of data your array holds, it will go through every element in the array, assign it to a constant new name, then run your block of code. For example, we could print out a list of great songs like this. Var songs equals an array of shake it off, then you belong with me, then look what you made me do. Do even, not thou. And then we could say, for song in songs, print my favorite song is string interpolation song. You can also use the for i in loop construct to loop through arrays, because you can use that constant to index into an array. We could even use it to index into two arrays, like this, if we had var people equals players, haters, heartbreakers, and finally fakers, we're gonna have their actions being, they're gonna play, they will uh, hate, they will break, oops, break, 
and they will fake. If we now say for i in 0 through 3, print, we're going to use string interpolation with people indexing i, gonna, then more interpolation, actions i, then interpolation, end the string, end the print, and end the loop. That should print out, player's going to play, hater's going to hate, Heartbreaker's gonna break and faker's gonna fake. You might wonder what use the half open range operator has, but it's particularly useful when working with arrays because they count from zero. So rather than counting from zero up to and including three, we could count from zero up to and excluding the number of items in an array. Remember, they count from zero. So if they have four items, the maximum index is three, which is why we need to use excluding for the loop. To count how many items are in the array, we use sumArray.count. So we can rewrite our code like this, for i in zero up to less than people.count. You can put loops inside loops if you want to, and even loops inside loops inside loops, although you might suddenly find you're doing something like 10 million operations, so be careful. We can combine two of our previous loops, like this, we have our people array, players, haters, heartbreakers, fakers, and our actions array, play, hate, break, and fake. We're then gonna say for i in zero up to less than people.count. var stir equals string interpolation and use people indexing into i. Gonna and inside that another loop for underscore in one through five, stir plus equals uh, space, then string interpolation, actions, i. End the inner loop, oops, end the inner loop, like that, and then print stir. So when that runs, that's gonna print out, player's gonna play, 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 hater's gonna so forth, you get the idea. One important note here, although Coders conventionally use i, j, and even k for loop constants. You can name them whatever you want. For person number in zero up to excluding people.count is perfectly valid. There's a third kind of loop you'll see, which repeats a block of code until you tell it to stop. This is used for things like game loops. We have no idea in advance how long the game will last. You just keep repeating, check for touches, animate robots, draw on screen, check for touches, and so on until eventually the user taps the button to exit the game and go back to the main menu. These loops are called while loops, and they look like this. var counter equals zero, while true, print, counter is now, string interpolation, counter. Counter plus equals one. Then if counter is equal to five, five, six, we're going to break out of the loop, end the condition, and then end the loop. And that code shows off a new keyword called break. It's used to exit a while or for loop at a point you decide. Without it, this code would never end because the condition to check is just true. And true is of course always true. Without that break statement, the loop is an infinite loop, which is usually a bad thing. These while loops work best when using unknown data, like downloading things on the internet, reading from a file like XML, looking through user input, and so on. This is because you only know when to stop the loop after you've run it a sufficient number of times. There's a counterpart to break called continue. Whereas breaking out of a loop stops execution immediately and continues directly after the loop, continue a loop only exits the current iteration of the loop. It will jump back to the top of the loop and pick up from there. As an example, let's take a new bit of code. We're gonna say var songs equals an array of strings, shake it off. Uh, then you, oops, you belong with me, me, then look what you made me do. We're gonna loop over those things with a for loop by saying for song in songs, if song is equal to you belong with me, then we'll call continue and end that condition 
and print out my favorite song is song. That loops through three Taylor Swift songs, but only print the name of two. The reason for this is the continue keyword. When a loop tries to use a song, You Belong With Me, continue gets called, which means the loop immediately jumps back to the start. The print call is never made, and instead the loop continues straight on to Look What You Made Me Do.